Hello Magic fans, I'm sure you were all excited to be returning to Innistrad in Midnight Hunt in September and then Crimson Vow in October as well, about six weeks later and I'm definitely looking forward to the preview stream which is going to be happening on the 24th of August I believe, it's uh, next Tuesday so all really looking forward to that. Uh, Innistrad is a fantastic, fantastic plane and it's one which a lot of people really, really love and what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be looking at some of the mechanics that we've seen in the past and see how the themes between those mechanics and what it might mean for mechanics going forward in the new Innistrad sets because they do like to do new things in these sets where we return to planes and but also kind of return to some of the original themes as well. So if you're not aware then Innistrad is a gothic horror themed set. It's actually potentially inspired from a Martin perspective from the Twilight books uh, but it takes its roots from the roots of those books as well. So you're looking at vampires, you're looking at werewolves, you're looking at all of these monster uh, themes and to, distinct, uh, to make a bit of a difference between Ikoria and Innistrad, what I tend to look at is monsters which come from humans. So that's, that's what I've said, so that's why you have vampires which are like um, humanoid and the werewolves which are transformed from humans and things like that. There's been five sets so far across two blocks. First of all we had Innistrad, Dark Ascension and Avacyn Restored and then we moved on to Shadows of Innistrad and Eldritch Moon. Shadows of Innistrad was one of my first sets that I played and it was the first set that I went to a Midnight pre-release for which was a really really fun time. I didn't actually play the original Innistrad block but I do know a fair amount about it and I've you know I've, I've played around the, with these cards for some time now. I've put on the screen now a list of uh, some of the themes that are in the set uh, in all of these sets and you can see there's definitely some similarities between these and what we're going to do is we're going to go through in kind of theme order and say what this means uh, going forward. And first we're going to talk about the Eldrazi in the room, it being the Eldrazi, and specifically in uh, Emrakul on Innistrad's Moon. Innistrad's Moon is made of silver and that's what gives the werewolves in particular a lot of this power and that is what is binding Emrakul, although she did kind of lock herself away there, so we don't know what it is. And actually I think that not having Emer uh, in the Eldrazi, not just Emrakul, not having Eldrazi in the set, because it has been confirmed by Marrow that that is going to be the case, is a positive step by Wizards of the Coast. I would really like to see the Emrakul story wrapped up at some point, or at least taken to the next chapter, because I think it's an interesting one, and they've alluded to it in some ways, things like the Wanderer from War of the Spark and things like that, but I think there's a, a nice bit of lore there, which is going to be quite new and refreshing potentially, so I'm quite looking forward to seeing what that has to hold. However, instead of talking about things that aren't going to be in the set, let's talk about things that are. And there is one mechanic which is continue right the way through all of Innistrad in the past. And of course, it's the first thing you think about when it comes to um, when you come to Innistrad and you think about Innistrad, and it's going to be the tribes. That's right. It's not the transform mechanic. It's tribes because in Avacyn Restored, there was no transform cards at all. Um, but there was these tribes, and the, there's five tribes on Innistrad, the five main tribes, and they're all based around the allied colour pairs. First of all, you've got black, white vampires. You've also got red, green werewolves. You've got blue, white spirits. You've got blue, black zombies. And finally, you've got the green, white humans, which are tend to be seen as the good guys, but as we know, nobody's purely good and nobody's purely evil. And this runs through every single set, like I say, and it's kind of shown up in different ways, but it's it's... Sometimes it's a subtle theme, but sometimes it's quite a strong theme. But I'd be really, really shocked if I don't see a continuation of these themes going forward. Um, how do it? Because we know that the first set's going to be based primarily around the werewolves, and the second set's going to be primarily around vampires. But I do expect to see the other three tribes in there as well. And I'd be really, really super surprised if we don't see any of this at all. However, I've, I've teased it a little bit. We've talked about Transform, and I, I do expect to see Transform come back in some way. However, they have seem to tease that it might not be returning the same way. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think especially when we're looking at the way the werewolves transform because they have a very set way of transforming where they transform if no player casts a spell on a turn and then they transform back usually to a weaker form if a single player casts two spells on a turn. I think for all it's an interesting way of doing it, it's been the same for five sets or four sets depending on how you count it now and there's not much more they can do with it, I don't I don't think. I think it's a really interesting mechanic, but I think it's kind of reached its head. Whereas we have seen that some of the other transform mechanics have done some different things. We've had lands that transform into creatures, we've had creatures which transform into other things, and different ways of transforming, sacrificing creatures, paying life, discarding a card, and all these other interesting ways of doing it. What I really don't want them to do is do it on some kind of MDFC, because I think the whole idea of transforming it and 
working or paying a price to transform your card is a important point of what the card does and of what Innistrad transform cards are. And I know that MDSCs are a really cool addition and I like that they do show up occasionally, but I don't really want to see it every set going forward, although I think it's, it's quite cool. Um, it's a bit like Sagas, you know, I think too much of a good thing kind of dilutes it if everything's special, nothing's special. And I think Innistrad is known for this transform mechanic, so this should at least keep the idea that it transforms even if they go about it a different way. I'd be, I think it'll be cool to see it going about it a different way, but uh, I think they will be doing something different, especially with the werewolves. But I think that it does still need to actually transform and not be an MDFC where you just play on either side. Another big theme with Innistrad, and it's not too surprising that this is going to be a thing with the gothic horror going on and we've already got zombies, is caring about the graveyard, caring about things dying, caring about things being in your graveyard. And we've got a number of ways this is done. First of all, we've got flashback, and I'm going to come back to that in a moment because we already know that's confirmed to be in the set, and we'll talk about that in a moment and what differences there are in this. Uh, we've also had Madness, and Madness is a mechanic which I actually thought, because it was such a really good fit in Shadows over Innistrad, that I kind of assumed it was part of Innistrad originally, and it's not. It was part of some other uh, blocks from back in, way back in Magic's history. It's a really cool mechanic. If you discard a card with Madness, you can cast it for its Madness cost as you discard it, and that cost is usually cheaper. So if you discard it, you can see Fiery Temmer here. It's usually one red red. If you discard it, you can cast it for a single red, and it's basically a lightning bolt at that point. That's really, really cool. It's a really good way of putting some more powerful spells in that you have to build around a little bit. Um, and I'm not saying I'm going to expect it to see it now, but I do quite expect to see it not too far in the future because it's a really strong uh, mechanic, and it's really cool and flavorful as well. Also had Morbid, which cares about creatures dying. So when a creature dies, uh, it triggers a Morbid, so you can cast a uh, spell. And if a creature dies that turn, then it has an extra effect. And it's a really powerful spell. Obviously, it cares about things dying, and we're not too surprised that that is going to be a thing where it's such dark and gritty uh, themes behind it. Another one which we had in Eldritch Moon is Delirium, and we've seen this more recently in Modern Horizons 2 as well, where it cares about having four or more types in your graveyard, so it's lands, artifact, creatures, enchantments, and all that type of thing. And usually a card will get more powerful if Delirium is activated. And that's quite cool because you can take Delirium away if you exile cards from a graveyard, so it's quite an interesting mechanic. But going back to Flashback, uh, the, the big difference here, this is the uh, Flashback card that we've seen, it is a two-colour card, and we have seen kind of two-colour cards in the past, with things like Unburial Rites, where it's uh, black for to cast it from hand and white to cast it from the graveyard, but we haven't seen ones where it costs two colours either from hand or from the graveyard. And I think the other interesting thing here is a green-white uncommon, and green-white isn't really a colour pen known for having its graveyard interactions, so what this says to me is, we might be seeing a, a cycle of two color uncommon signpost cards um, that which are all flashback. And I think that'd be really cool. I don't know how to do it. I've, as far as I know, all flashback cards so far have been instant or sorcery. Um, but we could see creatures with it where you cast it for its flashback cost. And if it's more expensive as a flashback cost, uh, it comes in counters or a creature maybe which is cheaper, uh, casting from the graveyard for its flashback cost. And you just got to get it in the graveyard early to, to cast it for that. So, um, and we have seen, because you would have to exile from your graveyard, so maybe you exile create a token. And we've seen that kind of come through with some of the ways you can copy creature spells now. Um, so that might be something that we're, we're going to see in the future. And I think that'd be kind of cool. I, I'd like to see that. And you might get a cycle of uncommons and maybe a cycle of res as well, which are going to do this type of thing. So heard it here first. Uh, cycle of uncommon, signpost, flashback cards. Um the next one I want to talk about, we've talked about all these dark, gritty, um, gothic themes so far, but if you know your storytelling, know, know, know these things, it doesn't just pay to be dark and down all of the time. You need some kind of hope. And there is this hope element that leads right the way through Innistrad. There's things like Faithful Hour, which uh, cares about casting things when you're at five or less life. So you're really in the, on the point where you're about to die, you're the hero who's about to just fall at the last hurdle, you get this huge bout of strength, a fearful hour, you get this angelic assistance or something like that, and uh, just at the nick of time you get this extra bout of power, and that that's kind of shown in these fearful hour cards. They've got a, a bigger effect if you are at the, the brink of death. Uh, we've also got Miracle, which cares about just drawing at exactly the right time for that dramatic comeback, 
Um, and you know that's that's quite a popular mechanic, which I've seen come back and, and back and back. And there's a whole legacy deck built around miracles, and I think that's it's kind of cool. And you can see where this is going. You can also see that a lot of these are white cards as well. Oh, not all white cards. Um, another one which I saw in Eldritch Moon it escalates, um, and this was kind of the fighting back against the Eldrazi, the the, the denizens of Innistrad fighting back against the Eldrazi and coming together and fighting together. So that's another one. And another idea of fighting together was in Avacyn Restored. We had Soul Bond, which isn't the most popular mechanic in the world, but this this was another example where the the good guys, I suppose, were fighting against the dark, and it just balances out some of these dark themes that are going on. And it, it, it's a really really good uh, storytelling trope, but you know it, it's definitely been a part. So. Yes, okay, we're going to have these dark themes going on in Innistrad, but we'll probably see these lighter themes and the, the denizens of uh, Innistrad come back together. It might not be in the first set, it might be more in the second set, that's the way it's been so far. First of all, Avacyn Restored, the third part of the three block set, and uh, then in Eldritch Moon we saw a bit more of this in the second block of the Shadows of Innistrad, the second set of the Shadows of Innistrad block. So we might see this in Crimson Vow, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And it might not be a big theme, but it needs to be there to balance out the rest and just to give the good guys a little bit of, of chance. And the last thing I really want to talk about, and it isn't really a theme of Innistrad, it isn't really a mechanic, but it is something which has made Innistrad really memorable, and this is the absolute bangers of cards. We've got Snapcaster Mage, we've got Liliana of the Veil, we've got Faith as Luton, we've got Thing in the Eyes, we've got loads of other cards as well. There's got some really, really iconic, powerful cards, uh, if we ignore Tibbles, and there's just so much power in Estrad. We we will be shocked if we don't see something powerful come back. We've already seen some really, really strong removal spells, some really, really strong commons and uncommons, and I expect to see some more power. I don't expect to see Eldraine levels of power. That's not what I want to see, and not what I expect to see, but you've got to get some staples in here, especially the way that the fire design goes these days, and hopefully we'll see some really cool designs which aren't just busted power level, but are really, really cool. Anyway... That's it for now. The Magic Showcase is coming out on the 24th of August. It's just uh, just under a week from now. Uh, so make sure to check that out. It's got nothing to do with me, obviously. That's Wizards of Coast, but I'll be watching along. Also, if you've watched this far, I would love to subscribe. Um, I am currently at about 126 subscribers. I'm hoping that by the time Innistrad comes out in paper, I'm going to be at 200. That's a really ambitious target. And if you can help us get there, I'd really, really appreciate it. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Uh, I had real fun making it. I like doing this bit of speculation, especially when I can relate it back to things that we've seen in the past. Hope to see you again soon and check us out for some draft tips as we approach Innistrad.